The correct insulation and proper installation methods are critical for a successful walk-in cooler project. Watch the entire video or jump ahead to the section you are interested in. Insulation is measured by R-value. The higher the R-value, the greater the insulation's effectiveness. The R-value depends on the type of insulation, its thickness, and its density. The industry standard for walk-in coolers is an R-value of 25. We recommend either rigid foam board insulation or spray foam insulation. The three types of rigid foam insulation commonly available are polyisocyanurate, extruded polystyrene, or XPS, and expanded polystyrene, or EPS. R-Max is our preferred insulation because it has the highest R-value per inch of thickness and is reasonably priced. With an R-value of 13.1 for a 2-inch thick sheet, only two 2-inch sheets are required to achieve R25. If 2-inch thick sheets are not available, use enough thinner sheets to achieve R25. XPS is usually pink or blue with an R-value of 5 per inch of thickness, requiring 5 inches of insulation to achieve R25. EPS has an R-value of approximately 4 per inch of thickness, requiring at least 6 inches of insulation to achieve R25. Spray foam insulation quickly turns an existing room, shed, or trailer into a walk-in cooler. Spray foam should be applied to the appropriate thickness to achieve R25, typically 4 inches. Many of our customers have had great success with closed-cell polyurethane kits from Energy Efficient Solutions. CoolBot customers receive a discount by using promo code COOLBOT underscore FOAM. An alternative insulation material is rock wool or mineral wool. This type of insulation will fit between the studs and joists of your cooler walls, floor, and ceiling. We recommend rigid foam insulation on the inside of the cooler over the studs and rock wool to reduce thermal bridging. Depending on your climate, a vapor barrier may be necessary. The vapor barrier should go on the outside, warm side, of your cooler. The most common insulation is fiberglass bat insulation. Do not use fiberglass bat insulation, as moisture will seep into it, mold will form, R value will decrease, and you will be disappointed. Measure and cut the insulation to size, tapering and notching as appropriate to ensure a tight fit. We recommend following this order for insulating your cooler. First, the floor, then the walls, and finally, the ceiling. Mark the wall, floor, and ceiling stud lines on the pre-cut pieces of insulation. Apply heavy-duty construction adhesive to the studs. Using self-driving screws or nails with large plastic washers, fasten the insulation to the studs and joists. Screws should be spaced 10 to 14 inches apart. Use spray foam to fill any gaps in the insulation. Tape all insulation joints with metal HVAC tape to provide maximum insulation value. Apply heavy-duty construction adhesive to the first layer of insulation. Place the second layer of insulation over the first and press firmly to ensure a strong bond. If needed, brace the insulation in place. When all of the insulation is in place and the adhesive is cured, fill any gaps with spray foam and tape any remaining joints. Based upon availability of materials, budget, and other factors, some of our customers have successfully deviated from our recommendations as follows. Contact us to brainstorm a solution for your unique situation. The revolutionary CoolBot allows you to cool a well-insulated space down to as low as 34 degrees Fahrenheit using a window air conditioner. For as little as a few hundred dollars, you can join 45,000 satisfied users and have your own CoolBot walk-in cooler. Visit our website for additional instructional videos and downloadable plans for trailer coolers, shed-style coolers, and even restaurant-style coolers.